Stock Watch today, we are focusing on hands-free CPR. Every year, more than 350,000 people suffer from cardiac arrest outside of the hospital, and 12% survive. That's according to the American Heart Association. It's partly because fewer than half receive CPR. Now health officials are trying to raise awareness about how giving CPR alone can increase a person's chance of survival. So here to take us through it is CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook. So I think, you know, Doctor, the first thing that sort of comes to mind is I don't even know when it's appropriate to jump in. Right. You know, you don't want to end up hurting someone or making their situation worse, but when's the right time to try and attempt CPR? So we're trying to make it more simple. So the three C's. The first thing is check. Check to see if the person is responsive. Check to see if there's normal breathing. If they're unresponsive and there's no normal breathing, then there's something really serious going on. The second C is call. Call 911. If you're with somebody, hey, call 911. If it's yourself, do that first, because once you start the chest compressions, you don't want to stop. And the third C is compress, chest compressions. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think the other thing that people sometimes worry about is the mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. How crucial is mouth-to-mouth -mouth in keeping somebody alive when you're attempting CPR? All right, so the reason why they didn't, they were saying, let's do hands only, is the ick factor. Right. There were a lot of people, it turned out, they said, you know, I just, I don't want to do it. So it's better to do something than nothing. If you are an expert and you are trained and you have advanced techniques, yes, the breathing may have a role there. But basically, when they did the studies about bystander CPR, it was really just about as good to do it without the breaths as with the breaths. Hmm. And the main reason is that you just keep on doing the compressions. You don't stop to give the breaths. And it's so important to keep those compressions going to get the blood going up to the brain. So why don't I start a little demo. Mm -hmm. so, so You brought a friend here. I brought a friend here. And thank, thank you very much to the American Red Cross, who not only brought the mannequin, but gave us a, a, a little refresher course. I wanted to make sure I was doing it right, and they actually came back twice because this, our segment for CBS This Morning is supposed to be a month ago, right. and it got canceled, and today they came back a second time, so really a big shout out to them. So let's also tell our audience, you're gonna stand on a box here because yes. you need to get a certain, that's important too, because some, <clears throat> some, most times people are prone on the ground, and you need to have uh, that elevation. They're supine. So supine, sorry. Supine. You know how you remember that soup, like a soup bowl, is <laughs> right, this way, exactly. it's on their back. Right, so they're on prone their back. Is on their back. They're on their back, right. usually on the ground. Right, and if they're not, get them there. So here for the demo, I'm doing it on a desk, yeah. but in real life, you would put it on, the person on a flat surface, hard surface, right. because you need those compressions to work. And so you're going to stand up. I'm going to stand up. You're going to lose my head. Yeah, we're gonna, you're going to get really tall. Normally, you don't want to lose your head okay. during an interview, but I think the viewers may now <laughs> not see my head Couldn't for resist, a few seconds. Right. So <laughs> I never can resist. All right, so we got the, we got the thing like that. So come, and remember, the first C was check. Oh, right. Okay, so. I didn't know it was going to be a pop quiz, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Well, repeating it and doing it again, that's how you get, I mean, I had to do this over and over again to make right. sure that I had it right, because I was nervous. I want to make sure I'm telling everybody the right way. Are you okay? Are you okay? They're not responsive. There's no normal breathing. So, call 911, or I'm going to do it myself. Then the C is chest compression. So, you take the heel of your hand, you put it in the middle of the chest, right about here. You intertwine your fingers. Now, this is not quite high enough, this box, but I'm standing on my tippy toes. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this. You'd be kneeling. Because you and need to be right on top. You want to be right. You want to have your shoulders over your wrists, and you want to have your, arm, your elbows locked. And now you start going down about two inches. Leave time for a recoil. You want to go about 100 to 120 times a minute. And you've probably heard there's a song that it turns out is about 100 to 120 times a minute, and that is appropriately named staying alive. So stay, uh, uh, uh. Uh, staying alive, staying alive, uh, 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 staying alive. Okay, you don't have to know all those fancy words. Yeah, you can just keep, keep doing keep that, that, that over, going, and over, yeah. over and over again, and you How don't want to stop. You keep going till there is help, because what is happening during this time is the blood, you know, what does the heart normally do? It pumps on its own, sends blood up the neck, up the carotid arteries to the brain. Well, after about four to five minutes of not getting enough blood, the brain cells start to die. With your arms, with your hand compressions, you're pumping the heart for it. So you're shooting that blood out, and it goes up, and it turns out that you can actually help gain time. So a couple of things. One, when uh, we, we've had to go through this first when I was in the military and also to go through survival training as a reporter, and you don't realize it's, it's great that they provided this because I could see it's people get very nervous. They, they, they start to do it and they go, oh, I'm doing it. And the doctor says, no, you really got to give it. Gotta and go. I could see it's hard work. It so you're asking work. people to do something like this and it's going to take a lot out of you too. It does. And you have, and it's great if there's somebody else there who you can switch off right. with. You know, it's hard to do it for more than a minute or two 
and really do it effectively. Because you've got to really depress that. And you got to get the two. And this is lifelike, so that's and, why. And your adrenaline's going, so you have to make sure you let it recoil and then go back down. But you still want to go enough times, like 100 to 120 times a minute. So the blood gets there. Now, this is buying time. Even if the CPR itself doesn't revive the person, which, which often it may not, you're buying time so people with advanced training can come in. And remember the defibrillator, the AED, yeah. the automated external defibrillator? That's the one you, you put on the leads and it, it, it talks to you, it tells you what to do. That can really be life-saving uh, for every minute of delay getting a shock when per, a person has ventricular fibrillation mm -hmm. or tachycardia, there's a 10% decrease in your survival. So at 10 minutes, you know, it's very hard to have somebody survive that. So every second matters. And I got to tell you, people are so afraid. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning, you're, what, am I going to hurt somebody? Well, that's what I was and thinking. I mean, to Vlad's point, when I saw that chest, you know, going up and down, yeah. I would be afraid that I would be doing it wrong, that I would injure somebody. But I they mean, say even you? if you break a rib, it's okay. You break a rib. You know, it's better to do something than nothing. And I have been in the situation several years ago where I came into a room where somebody had had a cardiac arrest, one of the 350,000 people a year who have sudden death from this, mm -hmm. and there was somebody in there, there were about 30 people standing around doing nothing. One person had training and was just frozen, hadn't started. Wow. And I started the CPR and, and uh, it went on from there. But, you know, that person afterwards came over to me and said, I, I, I just sort of froze. And I think that's such a natural, understandable reflex. But I got to tell you, on the other end of it, when I talk to the families of somebody who unfortunately does not survive, they're so grateful that at least the person had a shot. The person had a chance. CPR was started. And maybe that person's time was up, but at least everything possible was done to try to revive them. Right. Uh, Dr. John Lapook, thank you so much. And I want to add one more thing. People should get a CPR course. I mean, this yeah. is like a, a fast one. It's for teens and adults only. Mm -hmm. But if you have a kid at home, oh my gosh, you need to get a CPR course. Learn about uh, the breathing techniques. Yeah, because there's even, choking. you have to learn about the babies too. I, I remember one doing, doing the course and they show you how to do it for children, which is a little different, obviously, for a little baby. And, Absolutely. Uh, choking and breathing. Yeah. If there's a drowning, if there's a drug overdose in the person, and has trouble breathing. That, this doesn't work for somebody who has a, just a primarily a breathing problem. But so I really recommend, and on our website you'll see how to, how to find one of those courses. And there's one other thing, there's a great 30 second video, tremendous, uh, that New York Presbyterian put out. Dr. Holly Anderson is a colleague of mine. And the URL for it is just handsonly.nyc. Easy. Handsonly.nyc is like New York City. Yeah. And it's 30 seconds and it'll go over everything I just said. All right, all great information. Dr. John LaFleur, right. thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Thanks, Doc.